taking breath here. Good evening, Team Beast. And for those of you joining us for the very first time, thank you for clicking on Beast Capacity Outdoors. I'm your leader, Team Beast, Daddy Beast, and this is part three of the Plague Doctor Mask. Quilted. So, let's get on with it. going team beast um i've gone ahead and started casing some of this i've got all the pieces together well, as you saw i was sewing these together this is the top top beak i've still got to punch some holes and so that so that's why i've cased it make it a little easier to go through but i've gotten all these pieces together got the bottom of the beak together actually sewn together um it's looking good been a lot of work. I want to apologize for not posting in the last almost week. Um, I had a few orders come in, so that was good. That I had to get done, and I was a little behind on that had to be finished. But got those done. Um, also been dealing with some medical stuff. Nothing bad. Just um, all my insurance and everything medical stuff is all you now transferred out to the new county so instead of being in Riverside County I'm now dealing with Orange County so now I've got a new network and new doctors I gotta go see new pharmacies I gotta build a relationship with and it kinda sucks because I've been going to the same pharmacist out in Norco 30 plus years you know ever since we moved out there um, and now I have to go to a commercial place instead of mom and pop and that kind of sucks but they they did a solid yesterday when I went to go pick up my meds that I was out of and that's the reason I've been down body's kind of off kilter a bit not enough meds because when this whole thing started the lockdown said, hey, get three months worth of meds. Well, his new receptionist, when I went to make an appointment to get all this done, wouldn't let me in because, oh, well, he's a specialist. He's not a internal medicine doctor. He's not a family practitioner. Yes, I know this. He's a friend of the family, and he's my doctor. He's my family doctor. He's my general practitioner. He's my internal medicine doctor. As well as my specialist. Oh no, well you need to go to your doctor that's on your health care provider list and you know da, 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 and ask for a specialist. And, you know, because they needed a new card for my insurance because they didn't get sent one like normal. So um I didn't get to go in to get my refills. She even like refused to transfer me to his mailbox so I could leave a voicemail for him to let him know, hey, your bitch receptionist isn't letting me in to see you. So for the last three months now, I have had no refills done. And I've made the meds I had stretch out that far. And that weakens my body a lot. But nonetheless, it does affect, eventually affect me. Especially if I don't constantly eat clean so anyhow before I make this another video for <laughs> I that's why I've been gone and pharmacist and this is a mom and pop pharmacy and I've known them forever since I was a little kid and there's the, there's a relationship that's built and now that's gone and now I got to rebuild something at a CVS you know at a, at a major corporation brand kind of place but the people I called and talked to in the pharmacy they were kind of cool I mean you know of course they didn't know me but you know like my other pharmacy does but they did bend over backwards to help me 
once they understood the situation I was in, and they actually contacted my previous doctor um, out in Corona, who then was like, oh yeah, sure, not a problem. Let's give him his refills, and let's make sure he has enough for a couple months uh, while he does that transition out there, because I still don't have my new doctor for the new care, whatever it is, I care, whatever they call him out here. Good evening, Team Beast. Just another day of sewing the mask together. It's taking me a while because I'm only doing this in the evening. Uh, sewing this project together because this isn't a um, custom piece or anything like that. It's just something I was inspired to do. But I'm just continuing working on it. Do some more. I'll finish up the sewing here and then uh, we'll put together the mask and then stain it, oil it, that kind of thing. Get the, you know, straps put on it. So, enjoy. Number I bet you were wondering if I was going to stop and show you what went on. Well, another big bag full of wieners. We, yeah, I sewed wrong. A few pieces. Yeah, I just sewed the numbers in reverse. So, let's get back to it, shall we?
Okay, there you have it. Another section sewn. Let's see, it's taken me probably 30 minutes today to sew this together. And this was sewn the other day, like this up here. And then this part goes down to here. One's the eye, yada yada, so on and so forth. You get it. But yeah, almost there. I've got these two pieces up there I gotta sew. For the other side, this part's done and already together. And uh, yeah, it's been a long, long task. And then people are asking me, why would this be 150 bucks? You know, to buy. Um, hello, hand stitching this all, hand cutting it all. I'm already three hours into it right now, sewing the pattern, tracing the pattern, cutting out the leather, and s punching holes, and sewing the leather together. I'm probably already at four hours, thereabouts, thereabouts four hours. You know, and when you start working at 10, 15 dollars an hour, well now, 15 an hour here in California, you know, that's already, you know, four hours, that's already 60 bucks in the overhead. Yep. So. See you in a moment when the rest of that's done. So, I've got to, whoop, hang on, sorry. Let's see, let's get you down here. Okay, so, I've got these cased up, that's why they're a little bit darker than before. I've got to punch holes across the top here to connect these two pieces, and I got to punch holes across the bottom here to connect the bottom piece to here. Now, for these bottom pieces, which, there we go, um, I've got to connect and match up these holes right here. Okay, there we go. So, I've got to connect the eye pieces first. So I'll do that before I connect to the top. So I've got to connect. I'm going to sew this here. These two. And these two together. On both of these. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that to the other one. I'll get them punched. I'll get them sewn. I'll be right back. Whew, okay, so done with that. Well, I got the top and bottom of the eye put together. Uh, that's sewing right here. And these just these three seams. <coughs> As you can see, it's taking some shape. You know, it's got the curvature of the eye happening. Uh, which I still need to cut out the rounds over here somewhere. I'm kind of liking the way this looks so far. I like the messy nature of it. This this one's going to be a little while for the finish, I think. But the main gist of it is going to be done soon in the next couple of videos. I have punched the bottom, matched with the um, stitching holes on this side, its appropriate side. Um, it's starting to get some shape and texture and kind of cool look. We'll see how it turns out. And then um, I'll, I'll work on the other one as well. Um, same thing, I'll have to punch the holes and stitch together and then punch the holes again to match this side. But I want to get most of this put together so we can kind of see what kind of form we're getting. Because this is the first time I've done it. This could be an absolute positive mess and blow up on our faces and not be good but 
when you're adapting patterns and doing something one-off. It's kind of nature of the beast that can happen. Um, so let me go ahead. I'll get you guys angled down so you can watch for a little bit. We'll go through a quick stitching. It shouldn't take too long at all. I'll speed it up. Tip. Only work with as much as you're willing to untangle. Okay. Well, so far. Okay, so because of how long this video has been, I think I'm going to cut it here for now. I'll finish doing the other side and then uh, next video we'll be uh, finishing up getting the straps on it and getting it uh, oiled and antiqued and uh, finished up I'd imagine I gotta see if I want to how I want to do the eyeballs and all that so that's the bottom of the beak it's looking pretty good that should do it for us today and for this video with a little bonus segment yes this video was extra long i'm sorry if i bored you with some rambling during the sewing but i wanted to show you guys at least in one video um why leather can cost what it costs that's just one section of it of why leather costs the way it does leather can cost from the leather quality itself there's different 
tanneries out there and different tanneries with high reputations stuff like that those things will play a part in the cost of your leather Herman Oak and Wicket and Craig are pretty expensive here in the United States they're very good very high quality leather but I find the same quality in buying the on sale Tandy leathers for half the cost another thing that'll cost dye processing or stamping um, the, the actual carving uh, of a pattern or something on the piece uh, custom fitting a piece these are all things that will cost money for you um, the artist too not to mention I come my my background in, in leather work is I lived on a ranch I lived on a working horse ranch with cattle and livestock and horses and saddle tack and harnesses and stuff like that. Um, chinks and chaps for doing various things on horseback or around horses. Um, shearing chaps and sh horseshoeing chaps and stuff like that. So, you know, and we did welding. We did our all our own welding and stuff like that. So. It was cheaper to make our own, make our own harnesses because we had, you know, a couple horse buggies and wagons and stuff like that. So we had to upkeep the leather. We had to upkeep the, the repairs, you know. So that's where I learned a lot of my, and that's my background. My crafty, one-off, arty, arty stuff and carving stuff came in from my Crow uncle, Uncle Gilbert, the Crow Indian that my aunt had married. And... He taught me the finer points of the artistry of carving at 11 years of age. And later on in life, when I got older, hey, you can make money off of doing things custom for people, repairing things for other people, you know, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's my background. I do things that normal other companies would sell for twice as much. And I sell it for half as much because and I still make money and I still make a living because I find the deals that's the other thing the artist does he find the deals does she find the deals um, or do they just go no I want Herman Oak oh, I want Wicked Craig I want this I want the you know and it also depends to the last part on you what do you guys want this was a long video but this one has a little bit of the realities of leather in it for you as a client as a customer and the very cost that can be incurred on it and why leather costs so much or doesn't or um the doesn't part of why it doesn't cost a lot for some is because they're using fake leather or they're using pressed leather where it's leather dust leather shavings leather ground pieces like a paper mill kind of thing they get pressed and formed and into a sheet in monaga hide or plasto leather you know that kind of stuff fake leather not as high quality not as much attention to detail not at the same kind of glues lesser forms of glue lesser qualities of this and that lesser quality product and that's why it costs less as an example <clears throat> you can go online to wish fine leather goods with its horse tack fetish gear novelty gear whatever dog collars dog leashes you go in there and you can find them for five and ten dollars but they're not gonna last you like a artisan's leather will you know this mask will last a long time depending on how it's treated how it's taken care of um, but this same mask, if it was made by a company that made lesser quality products, could fall apart in a week. Strap could fall off, you know, rivet could fall off. Anyhow, I've rambled my butt on long enough for tonight's video. This is kind of what happens when I've been off for a little bit and come back in. Keep doing all that shit because then we'll get back to the bullshit we used to do. We'll be back to normal. We'll go out there and hug our friends and say hi to people have that human interaction that we've been missing. Hey friends.
please like, comment, and subscribe down below. Or just like it. And subscribe. Don't have to comment if you don't want to. Um, hit, the, hit the bell. You know, ring the bell down below. So that way you're notified when I post videos. Stay healthy. Be good, be kind. Team Beast. All the way. Thank you.